Welcome! Hello everybody! This is your girl, No Longer Bound. Welcome! I pray that you are having a blessed day. I pray that all is well with you and yours. I pray that you are blessed this morning when you woke up. You will be blessed all day long. You're blessed going in. You're blessed coming out. Everything that you do in touch is blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What well, this is your girl know all about. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And today is our book review on the Holy Spirit, Complete Forgiveness in Christ. We're picking it up from where we left off. Page number 70. 70. And our book, The Person and Work of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. And the ones of you that are new here, this is your girl Esther, no longer bound. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And make sure that you leave a comment. Make sure that you leave a question, comment that you just share. Join the No Longer Bound family. Amen. So listen, guys. Just in case I miss anybody, next week, uh, may you have blessed holidays. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the birth of Christ. Amen. Thank God for the birth of Christ. Okay, so let's get going. I know everybody's busy right now. You have a lot to do. So let's get going. So we're picking it up where it says, We should believe the teachings of God's word, that the spirit of God's son dwells within us, and we should surrender absolute control of our life to him, and look to him to guide us at every turn of life. Amen. He will do it if we only surrender to him to do it and trust him to do it. If in a moment of thoughtlessness, we go our own way instead of his, we will not be filled with an overwhelming sense of condemnation and a fear of offending God. That's not what he wants us to do. He loves us. It says, but we will go to our Father. Mm. We will go to God as our Father. Let me put a pin here. Some of us have trouble identifying with that. Because of our earthly father, and, and, and we were not maybe raised with a loving or even raised with an earthly father. And so when we try to identify with God as our loving father, sometimes you can have a little trouble. I know I did. Yeah, because... You're thinking, wow, I don't know if it's anything like my father. That's, that's not too cool. I didn't even know my dad or my father. And secondly, the one that I did know, it was not a good thing. And then my father probably was not a good guy. He could have not ever been there. When I needed him, he was not there. So how can I relate to God as my father when I think about my earthly father? Ooh, that's not good. So some of us had trouble, right? But when we think of a, a God as our father, nowhere near our earthly father, he is the one that is the real and true father. He's the one that, the way it's supposed to be done, he loves us no matter what. And he will never, I need you to understand this, never 
leave us. Never forsake us. Never abandon us. Never. How can you say that? Because I trust his word. Your word is your bond. All we have is our word. God bless you, Rashad. When you find someone that will not hold fast to their word, you don't trust them. You go, whoa, your word. You said this before and you don't hold to your word. So, earthly men, and when we relate to earthly fathers, it's like, my dad said that, you know, uh, he said he was going to do this, he said he was going to do that. He doesn't keep his word. I can't trust him. So now, how you tell me to go to God as my father and trust him? Yes, I can. My father was not there. I didn't meet him until I was an adult. God bless me as a stepfather, but that's not the point. The point of it is that when you're looking to a man, a human being, you got to realize that they're not perfect and they're made up of a bunch of, bunch of faults. We all have faults. That's why. We look to our Heavenly Father, who is our real dad, once we accept him as our Lord and Savior. And then he, in turn, holds fast to his word. And when he says he will never leave us, he will never forsake us, he will never abandon us, that's, yes, I can hold on to that. That's real. He's not a man that he should lie. Oh, thank God for my heavenly father. Let's get back to the word. So it says here, when we miss it, then we don't have to feel condemned. Oh my God, he's going to condemn me. He, I can, I, I fear going to my father, God. No, he says in Romans chapter eight, verse one, there is now no condemnation to them who love the Lord who walk after God, who know God, you've accepted him as your Lord and your Savior. He doesn't condemn us. What he will do is forgive us. What he will do is love. Love forgives. Yes. And even with our earthly father, I don't know why God have me on this right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But the ones of us that maybe didn't have a good relationship or had one and you know, things go on with earthly fathers. Some people didn't get to, to, to talk to their earthly father and uh, maybe get some things off of their chest. There was some misunderstandings. There was some, you know, disagreements. And unfortunately, maybe he passed on or the son passed on or something happened. And you were left with that feeling of, oh my God, you know, I, if only I could have, I, if only I should have. But you can let go of that. God can forgive you of that even. You can say that right now. You can just say it with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of my sin. I didn't realize what I was doing. I was in ignorance. Forgive me. And he will, and he has, and he done. He's done that. And you can be free to go forth in that. Amen. I had to, listen, thank you, Jesus. I had to write a letter to my deceased, my dead brother, because I was upset with him. There were some things that he had done to the family, to my mom, to, it just wasn't right. And I personally took an offense. I, I, I just couldn't, 
I couldn't find it in my heart to let go. And it was well after his death. And I'm trying to move on in my life. Trying to move on in the Lord. But I was bound. Yes, that's why I'm Esther no longer bound. I was bound. And the Lord allowed me to get a word through an author about spiritual warfare and letting go a bondage, getting forgiven. And the author said, write a letter to the deceased, the one that you are still holding that grudge against, and forgive them. Now, come on. Can I mail the letter? What can I do with the letter? That wasn't the point. I wrote the letter and later burned it up and destroyed it or whatever. But I was able to spiritually get that thing off of my chest, out of my heart. And I, I addressed it to my brother in releasing him and forgiving him. And as I forgave him, God forgave me. And I was able now to say I'm no longer bound by that thing. And able to receive complete forgiveness and move forward. Now, I don't know where he is. I wasn't there when he, when he passed on. I prayed by my heart that he got his life right. And that he is in heaven with Christ. And I pray if he is, I'll see him again. But that's not the point. I had to get free. I had to go to my heavenly father. And ask him. To forgive me. Amen. Let's go back to the book. So it says here. But we will go to God as our father. So now you're going to him, not as the father you know, the earthly father, that whatever. But you're going as your true father. The father that you know is the real deal. And you're going to confess our going astray. Believe that he forgives us fully because he says so. In 1 John 1 9. In 1 John 1 9, <coughs> excuse me, he says, let me get a drink. Mmm. A water. <laughs> he says, if we are faithful and just, if we commit our, we, we, we um, actually confess, not commit, but confess our sins before the Father. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. All, not some. All. A-L-L. -L, all. Okay? So he says here, And go on light and happy of heart to obey him and to be led by his spirit. Being led by the Spirit of God does not mean for a moment that we will do things that the written Word of God tells us not to do. The Holy Spirit never leads men contrary to the book of which he himself is the author. Please know this. <clears throat> I've learned this no matter what I'm Singing, ministering, I don't care what I'm doing with other believers. At a time something is going on, the Holy Spirit will never, never, never interrupt himself. He will never be confused or contrary. If, 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 if something is going and the Holy Spirit is moving in a direction, 
I'll go with the Holy Spirit. It has nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with my flesh. Nothing to do with my will. Nothing to do with what I want. But I will go in the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's when we say, have your way, Lord. That's a good place to be, by the way. Okay, so if he has put it into the word, then he is not going to tell us something that is contrary to the word of God. Excuse me. The word of God is alive. People say, well, but the Bible was written by man. And it, listen, the word of God was inspired by the Holy Spirit. In everything God does, he uses man. God is not here. God is a spirit. He's like the wind. He's like our breath. He lives within our bodies within the, as a temple via the Holy Ghost. Jesus, who we're getting ready to celebrate his birth, was born as a human being. But now he's no longer here. He lived on this earth 33 and a half years. He ministered for three and a half. He died. He was crucified, dead and buried, rose again. And he walked on this earth for 40 days after his resurrection. After his resurrection, he ascended into heaven. And now he is sitting at the right hand of God the Father, praying, interceding for you and me, for you and I. Why? He's praying for us that we will keep the faith, that we will obey the word, that we will hold out in this weak and evil day until he comes back to get us. So right now, everything that is done on this earth is done through man. Human. Male, female, human. We are his hands. We are his mouthpiece. We are his eyes. We are his body. If somebody is going to be loved, it's going to be done through us. If somebody is going to be forgiven, we forgive them via the Holy Ghost. If somebody's going to be, be fed, we feed them. We talk to them. We pray for them. Because he's working and moving through us now. Amen? Okay, we're about to bring it to a close. So it says here, The Holy Spirit never leads men contrary to the book of which he himself is the author. And if there is some spirit which is leading us to do something that is contrary to the explicit teachings of Jesus or the apostles, we may be perfectly sure that this spirit who is leading us is not the Holy Spirit. This point needs to be emphasized in our day. For there are not a few <clears throat> excuse me, who give themselves over to the leading of some spirit, mm. whom they say, the Holy Spirit, but who is leading them to do things explicitly forbidden in the word. Mm. We must always remember that many false spirits and false prophets are going out into the world. First John chapter 4 verse 1. There are many who are so anxious to be led by some unseen power that they are ready to surrender the conduct of their lives to any spiritual influence or unseen person. In this way, they open their lives to conducting and malevolent influence of evil spirits to the other wreck and ruin of their lives. We're going to stop right here and we're going to say to you, no matter what you're going through, God offers complete forgiveness. He would that you would be no longer bound. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. 
So why did Jesus come? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Be free today. Be free today. God bless you, Taylor. In the name of Jesus, be completely forgiven. If there's anything that is holding you bound, get rid of it. Somebody has done you wrong, forgive them. You say, but you don't understand. You don't know what they did to me. Forgive them. When you forgive them, God, your heavenly Father, will forgive you. But he says, if you don't forgive them, he will not forgive you. So, it's so that you can be free. So that I can be free. So that we can no longer be bound. It's a big charge. It's a big charge. It's not easy to do. The only way you can do it is by the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray right now. I pray for our youth. I pray for every listener. Oh God, that is bound today. That is bound today by unforgiveness. That is bound today because of something somebody has done or said to them. Be it by thought, by word, or deed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch them now. And they will say, Lord God, help me to let go. Help me to not carry this burden for another minute. Lord, my mother mistreated me. She abandoned me. Lord, my father did me wrong. Lord, my brother abused me. Lord, you don't know what my sister did to me. Lord, she said she was my best friend, but she turned her back on me. She hurt me. Lord, he said he was my running buddy. He said he would always be there with me. But when times got tough, he walked away. Oh God, she, she promised that she would pay me back. She owed me, I helped her in the time of need. And now she's saying, she don't remember. She act like she never knew. Oh God, my child, my child. I raised this child, I birthed this child in the world. This child has hurt me. God, what can I do? He's saying, forgive her. Forgive them. Let me handle it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I can handle it. I'm big enough to deal with it. I can change hearts. I deal with the conscience. I can handle it. Give it to me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that they will be no longer bound. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. Listen, this is your girl no longer bound. Leave me a comment. Give me a question. Do something to let me know if you're being blessed by this broadcast. Thank you for coming. Like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time.